We all know that you can get mythical items from mythical monsters. But what about the smaller ones? Today we're going to be looking at our top 10 Theros-themed homebrew items. Welcome everyone, I'm Sean, this is Tony, and today we're going to be looking at 10 magical items that you can use in the Theros campaign, or at least items that are themed after Theros creatures. Right, and we found a lot of these on D&D Beyond, which is great. I know you guys love when we dig through there, mm -hmm. yes. but there's so much in D&D Beyond. There is, so sometimes if you want to actually find some good stuff, you have to do a little bit of digging, but thankfully that's why we're here to save you the trouble. For example, none of these were labeled Theros. We actually just had to search by the monsters mm -hmm. that were in Theros, so these are the things that you would get if you killed or slayed some of these monsters. Yeah, and these are monsters that may not necessarily have like a really big version of it, but these are still options that you can offer for a player in case, you know, they run into this monster and then they kill it and then they get rewards. So, yeah. Well, we did say we were gonna do weapons this week and there are a few weapons in here, mm -hmm. uh, but we thought items would work a lot better for you guys. So let's get into them, shall we? Yes, and the first one is actually gonna be off of one creature. Uh, so it's gonna be the Great Axe of the Minotaur. Um, so this one's interesting, it's an uncommon Great Axe, uh, mm -hmm. pretty regular, uh, so it's kind of like this massive bronze axe you know, that you have. Uh, but the cool thing is that it has a feature where if you're attacking an enemy that is cornered or has their back against the wall, actually have advantage and deal an additional 1d12. Right, and this one is, uh, it, it, what's cool about it is it's it's like the Minotaur's Maze. Yes. You corner them, you trap them with that, and you've got that extra 1d12 that you can do with advantage. It's cool because it kind of is like the Minotaur where they actually use the maze to their advantage to corner their foes, so it's actually really cool. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you have proficiency with a great axe, you add that typical stuff, but really nice uncommon weapon. And that one there was by Jim Jam's Jim Jamboree. Yes, um, congratulations for getting that correct. You're, yeah, I think that was a, a good one. <laughs> um, the next one we're going to look at here is the Minotaur armor. Yeah, so this is a very rare plate armor. So basically, while you have this armor equipped to you, you can actually use the Minotaur charge attack uh, as an option if you want to use that. So it's kind of like where you have to go about a certain mm -hmm. distance and then you can actually do an attack and knock something prone. And you also get uh, advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. So you get that magical advantage immunity type thing that you got going on. Yeah, exactly. And that charge attack. Now, I'm not sure how this works if you are a Minotaur and you already have that <laughs> Kind of doubles up, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, basically it's kind of a nice option for someone that isn't a Minotaur because uh, normally you can't even use this charge as an option. So. Well, I don't think a, a Minotaur would wear another Minotaur. <laughs> it would be kind of like like a person wearing a person's skin. It's a yeah, little messed no, up. It's but creepy. I for anyone been, else... <laughs> I have been watching Hannibal on Netflix, oh, no. anyway, but this yeah, is a little, not, too, relevant, this is a little yeah. too much. Um, but uh, the next one here we're going to look at is the Lamia's Flute. Yeah, so the flute is pretty interesting. It's actually a blowgun. It's an uncommon magical weapon. Uh, so the cool thing is, instead of doing piercing, you can actually choose to do the poison damage. Yeah, I just think the the flute, uh, at the same time as it being a blowgun, you yeah. just kind of go, flute, and it shoots. Shoot. <laughs> doesn't it kind of alert people that they're, you're shooting a poisonous dart at them? That's a good point, yeah. Um, but it does some cool things besides being a blowgun. So basically, you can play the flute, uh, and does this little melody, and you can actually do this to cast Charm Person once per day uh, using your spellcasting modifier. Um, mm -hmm. And this flute, um, you know, once you do the Charm Person, you can only do it once per dawn. So, not only can you poison somebody from a distance, you can also lure them to you. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, kind it kind of nice. has like a double thing there, but it's really cool, uh, really nice. Uh, and we don't really usually see a lot of blowgun uh, options. You don't really see a lot of Lamias anywhere. That too, that too. Exactly. Just one in the middle of the desert somewhere, you know? <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but there are several more items we want to kind of go over, and this one I love. This one's probably my, well, no, the Dryad one's my favorite, but yeah, this one's, this is a close second. Um, this is the Collar of Severus. Now, it, you are reading that correctly. It requires attunement by a dog-like beast. Yeah. So this is a spiked collar that you can put on a dog or a similar dog-like creature, mm -hmm. right? And uh, not only does it, it grants them all these really cool abilities. It allows them to understand Infernal. Mm -hmm. It uh, gives them see invisibility to yeah. creatures or invisible creatures. Ignore illusions. They gain resistance to fire and necrotic damage. They gain a multi-attack. Three bite attack. Yeah, and they're fitting for the different heads of the Cerberus. But they can only do that once per short or long rest. Mm -hmm. So don't worry, it's not super overpowered with that. But then you also get uh, a three charge of burning hands from this combo. Yeah, yeah. So 
you know, because you got three mouths, <laughs> you can blow three. Okay. Uh, you speak a command word in Infernal, which is literally the word speak in Infernal. Mm-hmm. And the creature uses action to expend one charge of burning hands. The spell save is DC 13. Yeah. So it's not overpowered, but it is really thematic. Alone. And the cool thing about it is that it's really designed to be used like on a pet or like a little companion, mm-hmm. uh, which we don't really, uh, usually see. We usually see a lot of items for the players. So it's nice to see something for like, you know, maybe like a, a animal or something that you've kind of tagged along. The way. Yeah, other than like a saddle, you know. Yeah, or, you know. So, you know uh, yeah, exactly. So it's like something for someone else. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. So this next one here, I um, I think this could use a little bit of work, but we're mm-hmm. going to kind of go over it. This is the Harpy's Feather Earring. Yeah. So this is a legendary item that does require two mints. Um, you know, obviously by the description, it would be an earring, and then this earring actually has fifty charges. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like imagine like you're kind of plucking a feather off every time. But so basically, the way that this works is that you have these fifty charges that doesn't come back. Uh, but it gives you the option to use the following spells. Uh, fly, Levitate, uh, Investiture of Wind, probably said that wrong, uh, <laughs> Control Weather, and Conjure Elemental. And each one has like a certain amount of charges that it costs in that respective order. Right, and you can car- uh, conjure an Air Elemental only because, you know, you are a Harpy, yeah. for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are a couple of things here that I would change. Yeah. Like, I would want some, like, Psychic Scream or some sort of, like screech sound yeah absolutely you know out of the harpy stuff um and it's fine not you know doing this thing where it it can regain charges you don't necessarily need to regain charges i would just look at this as a couple of different spells i would change with it maybe give it a little bit of flavor text as to how you got the feathers yeah absolutely like um because uh, basically the, the item just has the charges and the spells uh maybe adding a little bit of story and back lore to this would be cool I- i'm sure anyone who includes this in their campaign can do so uh but sometimes it's kind of nice to have that as an option in case the player or dm mm-hmm. wants to use that so but still the concept is actually really really cool yeah i really love that that's why we threw it on the list yeah um this next one here is kind of interesting for the most part, <laughs> you may want to ask. Let's pull that up here. It's the Mask of the Cyclops. Yeah, so this is interesting. It's a rare item that does require attunement. Uh, so basically, while you're wearing this mask, your strength goes up by three to a maximum of 20, so you mm-hmm. can't surpass that typical limit. And you gain the ability to cast Magic Stone at will, and you learn the giant language. Right, and Magic Stone, remember, is that spell that you get there uh, that you're able to throw out those pebbles. Yes. With it. mm-hmm. um, it's kind of a nifty little thematic thing because yeah. you're you know, a cyclops throwing rocks. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely not like throwing large boulders or anything, but you know, the pebbles is a nice touch. It is. And but it, it has it, a caveat. Right, it does. And that's something that uh, we should probably look at here. Uh, the one caveat to this is that you have poor death perception. Yeah, I know. It's quite a shame. So anything that's farther within 30 feet, you actually have disadvantage <laughs> to attack it. Well, if you're looking at everything like this, <laughs> yeah. you know, you can't see how things are coming close to you. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a cool themed item. We got four more we want to go through. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one of our longer videos, huh? Yeah, I know. But uh, a lot of good items in this one. So this one is interesting. So this is the Sword of the Chimera. And we kind of went over it a little bit on this one because I think that the idea and the concept is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a couple things that we would change, but basically what it is, it's a rare short sword. Um, and it, uh, basically what it does, is it gives you three different abilities. It has fire, flight, and maul. Right, so you got the bat wings, you got the, the lion's head or yeah, whatever it yeah, is. Exactly. Got, so it's it's all these different points of the chimera itself, right? Um, the wording on this is a little bit odd, but I think I get the gist of it. Mm, basically, yeah. you roll a d4 to see what you get out yes. of those. On a one, you get nothing. On the other two, you get one, two, or three. Mm-hmm. You know, either uh, 44 fire damage on a hit, uh, movement is doubled, but you can fly, but you must finish your, your yeah. turn on the ground. Yeah. Or uh, Maul, which gets you an extra attack and advantage on the rolls. Um, those charges get used up, and then you only have the other two left. Right, and exactly. Left. And it's kind of tricky because it doesn't really give a lot of details as to, you know, getting those charges back or like, you know, things like that. It, mm-hmm. it definitely could use a lot more details. But what we kind of like is that, you know, since the Chimera is a multifaceted creature, it's cool to have these multiple features on the weapon. So it's actually yeah. a really, really good idea. And the concept is great. Right. I, I I mean, there's a couple of ways I would change this. I would either make it a at the beginning of the day, you roll a die to see what yeah. ability that thing yeah. has for the day um, or yeah, make it a bonus action that you roll something and then you it, you get it from the table. I would also throw a fourth one in there. You know, it's just something that you can roll that 1d4 mm-hmm. so that you have something for 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
That's yeah, it. exactly. But the Chimera is a cool creature and therefore also a cool weapon. So, you know, there's still a lot of potential in that one. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one we've got here is the Lash of the Hydra. Yeah. This is probably what, my favorite. What is it with magical whips that always ends up being a really, really cool thing? I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. This <laughs> is a, so this is a very rare whip. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty cool. Uh, obviously based off of the Hydra, and it has this feature called Hydra's Frenzy. So whenever you roll a natural 19 or a 20 on the attack, the whip actually grows an extra cord mm -hmm. that you can then add on to the damage. And you can actually grow up to an extra, uh, up to four extra cords, so you can have up to five cords on mm -hmm. the whip. So like every time you're attacking- So you can do up to five D4. Exactly, it's so, so super cool. Yeah, and it's kind of neat too, because it has a detriment as well. It does, it's cursed. Um, if, you, if you happen to roll a critical one on this thing instead of a 20, you know, uh, it loses one of those cords. Yes, and then when you're down to the last one, if you only have that one cord left and you do roll a natural one, you then have to roll a D100, and there's a 10% chance that the entire whip becomes just a useless rope. Right, exactly. So. Now, I really love this because it's it's tied into the Hydra so much yeah. that the more you use this or the more damage you do with it, mm -hmm. the other heads kind of spring out it's of it. It's really cool, yeah, because obviously, you know, when you're defeat when you're fighting a Hydra, you know, the heads can respawn and come back. So the whip actually reflects that. Um, and whips are cool. Uh, they're really they're a really underutilized weapon in D and D, or at least we don't see them enough. Uh, so it's like a really cool thing. Yeah, you've got that fifteen foot reach. It's a finesse weapon. It's, yeah, it's very cool. whips are exciting. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, this next one here. <laughs> this next one here is probably the one that that I like the most with things. And I know I've said that about three different things already, but. Um, this is the Dryad's Gift. It is a bow, mm -hmm. um, and it's got some really awesome features. Yeah, so if you actually look into this one, there's a really beautiful description as to how you're gifted the bow and all that and what it looks like. Well, she basically, Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, which so is, that's why it's called the gift. Yeah. Uh, but basically, it's a plus one to damage and attack rolls. It's a magical weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, the, one of the coolest features is that you can grab like a branch off of a tree and then when you draw it, it actually becomes ammunition for the bow. Right, so, you know, you've got unlimited as long as you're in the woods yeah or at least you have like sticks or something available you know you'll have ammunition all the time right um it has a couple of things as well yep. uh so basically it has this thing where the bow is unbreakable but ma uh, not magical means and the user you know smells uh faintly of sweet flowers but the cool thing is uh, <laughs> is that you actually have advantage on any saving throws based on harmful odors and creatures that try to perceive you by smelling you out have disadvantage. So you've got this like perfume, this air about yeah, you from yeah. this. And it, it's really cool uh, because the third ability in this thing kind of ties into everything too. Yes, yeah. You, just imagine you being in the woods and having these abilities. Your scent is masked, you can grab uh, twigs from the tree in order mm -hmm. to make arrows out of them. They return to be twigs after they've <laughs> been shot. Um, but then you also get this thing where you can talk through the forest to another person. Yes, yeah. So um, a living bow can speak with the forest by concentra uh, concentrating on a known recipient. Let's say Sean's on the other side of the forest yeah. and I want to talk to Sean. I can communicate as long as there are trees connecting between mm -hmm. where he is and where I am. Yeah. The trees pass along the information, so it's not secret to anyone that can speak with plants, for yes, example. Yes, which hopefully isn't too common, but <laughs> the idea is really cool where you're basically using your environment uh, and nature itself to communicate. And honestly, the bow is actually really, really awesome because it's so well-themed and it, all the features are really centered around what it's trying to do. It's trying to be, you know, one with nature. Uh, it's trying to be something that's like, it, it, it's a very defensive thing too, because, yep. you know, you have unlimited ammo, you have the ability to kind of get unnoticed by smell, and you have the ability to communicate. So it actually does a lot of different things and still within uh, that theme. Now we've got one last one here for you, but this one comes with a little bit of a, a an extended communication up. Yeah, exactly. So uh, as we were going through, uh, we actually saw this one here. It's the Talisman of the Seder. And uh, this is done by a guy named Bonus Action, and he is on Instagram, and he has a Patreon and all those cool things. Yeah. We'll put the link down below for you guys, too. Yes, uh, but really quick, Bonus Action is really cool because he has a lot of different other items <laughs> and even some, like, monsters and stuff, and each one has, like, some beautiful artwork. They're mm -hmm. all well-themed, so be sure to check that out when you get a chance. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to be looking at the Talisman of the Seder. Right. Now, you know how that thing that when you're within uh, five feet... Yeah, that enemy, blank point range, basically. You, you have that disadvantage. Right, because, you know, he's right, right next to the guy and it's hard to shoot. Yeah, not anymore. Not with the Talisman of the Seder. Uh, when you wear this medallion there, you uh, are able to attack within five feet... You don't have that disadvantage. Yes. And your normal range is increased by 10. Which is pretty crucial because depending on the 
ranged weapon, uh, that extra 10 feet can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, you, you have the sounds of the force as well. Uh, so while you're tuning the item, uh, you actually have proficiency with the hand flute, mm -hmm. and you can play this, <laughs> this flute, and like, a la like Disney Snow White, you roll a d8, <laughs> and that's the amount of birds that actually come by, and you know, say hello in your large- Tweet totally happily coming. along with your yeah, song. Exactly, and all that kind of stuff. exactly. Um, but we, we really think that you guys should check out Bonus Action. He's got yeah. some really awesome stuff on mm -hmm. there. And this is this is just one of those great items. There are full sets of armor. There are well done things that he does for weapons. Uh, I think he even does commissions. Yeah, cool. yeah, exactly. So be sure to check them out. Uh, and also, all these items can be found on Dina Beyond or, of course, through uh, Instagram there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, be sure to try to include them in your Theros campaign or even any homebrew campaign. They're really cool items. Uh, some of them might need a little bit of tweaking, but otherwise, all the concepts here are very, very cool and very original. That's right. And we have uh, the results of our... Yes, we do. Uh, so if you remember last week, we actually had a, a little trivia quiz about the firebolt and the Eldritch Blast against the door. Uh -huh. uh, so we are glad to announce that we'll be giving out a copy of that Mythical Encounters. Uh, to Jeffrey Perrin. Mm -hmm. um, you were Congratulations, one of the, yeah, Jeffrey. You were correct on there. Uh, we actually had a lot of great answers on there. Many of you were very spot on with the correct answers as well. And very specific. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we will do more contests like this in the future with it. Yeah. Uh, upcoming videos, maybe once a month, we'll, we'll give away uh, a larger version of a uh, DM's Guild thing like this one. This one was a $15 item. Mm -hmm. So uh, just go ahead and send us, uh, we'll send you an email or what have you on that and we'll get it over to you as soon as we can. Yes, and be sure, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to us and hit the bell. Uh, you'll get a notification as soon as you get a video up. Later this week, we are going to be looking at a new subclass and some more Theros stuff. Yeah, and remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are homebrewed. So until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.